Shall we? We make that first step now this morning. We we make that decision for for recollection. We want to put everything else that is a diverting us, that is a distracting us. We want to give all our attention now to, to, to the one thought that is the most important. Let's just put everything else to the side now, just all our, all that we have to do today and all the jobs and tasks and all of that, anything that is distracting me in any way, just put it to the side and we give ourselves this chance. We make every possibility for this encounter I just decisively refuse everything everything that is taking me away from myself so I want to gather all myself on everything my body all its organs, internal and external. My mind, my psyche, my, my emotions, everything. I just bring it all, all of who I am. Bring it before the Father who created me. I bring it to him who, who is the source of all. I bring it to the sun, the sun who has revealed himself to me, who is the visible sign of Visible expression of the Father. I see him through the power of the Holy Spirit. The third person. Oh, take possession, Holy Spirit, of my mind and my heart and my body and my soul, every organ, external and eternal, internal. Do your work in me, move in me, live in me, act in me, O most Holy Spirit, I need you, I pray, I beg, come, O most Holy Spirit, and take control, take I give you permission to really take over my life, my thinking, the understanding, Guide me into the ways of, of truth, of life, of love, of 
eternity, eternal love. Give me the grace to go over to a place of rest and peace. to go to the other side, to cross, cross over from this world to the next. So just, just remember, where are you going now? Where are you going? Jesus said, I am knocking at the door of your heart. If you open the door, I will enter. Dine with you. This invitation of, of of Jesus to come in. How am I to open this door this morning? Door, what does it mean to open the door of my heart? Is it not to become aware Jesus, you are here. Father, my Father, my heavenly Father, you are here. I open the door and you are here. Heavenly Father, you are here and I am here. And I just, I just wish to be here at this moment. awareness. is good for us to be here. Jesus says, enter, enter that, into your room and close the door and pray to your father who is in that secret place and your father who is in that secret place listen to you your father who who hears you who who sees you Who sees what is in you? Who is truly 
100% present to you now. So just enter the center, enter your room. He's waiting for you. Nothing else matters now. know everything about you. I know where you are now when you sit down, when you stand up, when you lie down. I know all your ways. I every hair on your head is counted. For it is I who created you, I who made you in my image. You belong to me. I, I knew you even before you were created. Or you were conceived. I knew you. I chose you. I have a plan for your life in this world. A plan for peace. A plan for prosperity. That you would grow, become supreme, filled with my life. Wonderfully, I made you. How I wonderfully plan for you. I desire to pour my love upon your life, to restore you in my son, to heal, to free you, to save you. is my promise, my faithfulness, the faithfulness of love, promise of mercy, promise of forgiveness. When will I finally be happy? When will I finally be free and at peace? Is it not when I come home to you, Father? I return, I come to my senses. When I come before you, Lord, I always feel guilty. I 
and maybe I start to justify myself. Maybe I, in a way, make my excuses. Or my life would have been different if I, if this had happened or my circumstances and we excuse what is lacking in us. Maybe I can humble myself like Like the sinner at the back of the synagogue, I can bow my head and pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. I will return to my father. I will. Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve. I'm a sinner. I have fallen so many times. I have took advantage of everything you gave given me. So we turn back and as we go to meet the Father, the Father, he, he doesn't ask you for any excuses. He doesn't ask you to justify yourself. He's just happy for you. He doesn't care about what has gone wrong. He, I have loved you with an everlasting love. This is the heart of the father who cannot refuse the child whom he created. My thoughts for you are Endless. You belong to me. You are my. I hear him speaking over you. You are mine, my treasured possession. But if you seek me, you will find me. I am waiting for you. I am able to do more for you, for you than you can possibly imagine. I am your father, comfort you, who embraces you. All your troubles, I sent my son, I love you so much. To believe in him, to see him, is to see me. To 
Just remember Jesus is here. He's our God, he's beside me. My savior is here, my redeemer lives. Jesus. Jesus who who is that revelation of the Father. He came to show us that our God is for us and not against us. He is, he's not counting my sins. He's not taking account of my failures. He came to save me. Jesus died so that I might live, so that I could be reconciled. Again, I could openly accept his love, forgiveness. That he could fill me with his himself. I may open that gift if Jesus, the gift of the Holy Spirit, sent by the Father. Oh Jesus, oh Father, Father, he tells us, come home, my child. Come to the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of time. Come home and I'll throw the biggest party you ever had. I've always been your father. I will always be father to you. The question is, will, will you be my child? I am waiting for you. Come home. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me, I will bring you home. I love you and you are mine. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me, I will bring you home. I love you, and you are
God has called me. I call you by name. He's called me personally. That's why he is here. He's very busy with us. He really is. He, he wants us to work for him. To work in his kingdom. To bring about this mission to accomplish this ushering in of the kingdom that are you aware of, of this, this such important work? Are you aware that God has called you? You're, you're here this morning for a reason. You have been brought to this place of encounter. That's why you're here this morning, this early hour. God calls me personally. That is why I'm here. I, when I came to be with us, we're all friends. We're all, we're like the 12 apostles with Jesus. There are 13 of us here. Just feel that privilege that he's, he has called you personally to this reality. You know why he's calling you. He's, he wants to change the world with you so important in this time to, to show people the way to freedom, that there is another world, another kingdom. To see what is stopping you, what is preventing you from, from crossing over to this kingdom of God. What is pulling you away? Are you tied to this world? And to its pleasures, to worldly things. No, what is stopping you? Is it is it people in your life that you feel you have to commit to or put so much energy into pleasing others? Can you see the sin? Is it other sins? Is it addictions or they are the obstacles, these, these things that we are tied to that take our attention that sin and guilt that follows it. What is that which is making you stop on your way, on your path? Closing the door of your heart.
Why are you falling into the mud? Just, just kneel there, or just if you have to get on your knees and beg Jesus, show me Jesus. Show me what's wrong with me. Show me where the is tying you to this world. Just ask Jesus to lay his hand on your head, just on your shoulder now. And they were cured. The man who was deaf, who had that impediment, who laid your hand on him, just took you aside and as you do now, you can see how deaf we are, how blind I am. Oh, Jesus, put your fingers into my ears. That I may listen to your voice. Touch my tongue with your spittle. That I may hear you cry out on my behalf. A fata, which is to be opened. That my tongue may be loosened, that my ears be opened. that I may be healed. Jesus, you know my bones. You know where my fear is and the roots of it. You know that insecurity. Your love overcomes every fear. Oh, Jesus. Command every evil, every addiction to, to leave me now. You are Jesus. You are my Savior. 
Just there in your spirit, just see Jesus laying his hands on you. Just see. How, how much love there is for us. Feel his strength coming out of you, just his power. Woman who, the hemorrhage who touched him. How came out of Jesus that healed her. Because she believed. Just hear Jesus tell you, don't be afraid, my child. I'm with you, I'm with you always. I'm always here to save you, to deliver you of every evil. You are never alone. Thank you, Jesus. We're so great you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for me. Thank you for touching my life. This is so important for me. Jesus, thank you. for your love for, for me, to call me by name. Come now in this silence to lift me from every fear. To follow you, that you may bring me home. Thank you, Jesus, for this encounter, for the tears that are filling my eyes in this moment, for this newfound joy, this freedom. Thank you, Jesus, that I am never the same with you. I no longer live, but you live in me and move in me and act in me. May today, may you be glorified. Thank you for your healing touch upon my life. Thank you for healing all these insecurity. That I have, I have nothing to fear in this world. I am no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I am a child of my father.
the Gospel of Mark. Returning from the district of Tyre, Jesus went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee, right through the Decapolis region. And they brought him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech. And they asked him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, put his fingers into the man's ears and touched his tongue with spittle. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and he said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened and the ligament of his tongue was loosened and he spoke clearly. And Jesus ordered them to tell no one about it. But the more he insisted, the more widely they published it. Their admiration was unbounded. He has done all things well, they said. He makes the deaf hear and the dumb speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus.